I started to squint about eight years ago and um, I think I was getting to a point in my life where I had come to the conclusion that work was very important to me. I'd come from a fine art background and was somewhat struggling in the art world. I wasn't very keen on it as a place to exist as an artist. I felt quite disconnected with my audience going through the gallery system. And I wasn't really sure what I did want to do, but I kind of was starting to get a feel for what I didn't want to do. So that's how it all started, really. My mother has always been a great inspiration to me. She died in my late 20s. That was uh, the first real sense that life is fragile. I definitely didn't want to look back and have regrets that I didn't really give something a proper go. And I was also aware that I probably had a long time working ahead of me and that I really did want to do something that I love. I think that pushed me to just think, well, seize the day. I don't know what makes somebody want to be focused and work hard. I come from a family of grafters, that's for sure. The motivation really just comes from creating and trying to create products that you love and that you're proud of putting out into the world. You know, watching other people that have done it before you and that have achieved such great success and who've made such a contribution to the world by doing that in terms of employing so many people and uh, running big international companies. I took a very tiny space because it was all I could afford on Redchurch Street in Shoreditch. It had a little showroom on the ground floor in the basement. It was an even smaller studio space. Uh, it was somewhere which I found myself six and seven days a week. It was very quiet. The phone might ring at the beginning once every two or three days, and that was usually a member of my family seeing if I'd sold anything. Incomparable now to what the day's like at work. It's so crazily busy, but uh, it was very quiet at the beginning. It's changed incredibly over the years. It's certainly not inexpensive now, but it's a very exciting place to have the studio and all the different brands and designers who are there. These days, it's so much easier for a client to commission a piece just because we've created so many different pieces of work over the years. There's a substantial back catalogue that we can reference. In the early days, of course, they were very brave and they didn't know what they were going to get and I didn't know what it was going to look like. But now, reference starts at the website. Clients can come in for a bespoke palette appointment with me if they want to into the studio. If a client's coming to squint, one of the things is clear is that they're coming for my taste and my eye and the way I combine colour and pattern. So usually they're quite relaxed and to a certain extent they have to be in terms of the actual combinations themselves. Once we've decided on the fabrics, it's up to me how we put it all together. I think the parts of the business which excite me the most are um, dealing with my clients one-to-one, -one, which I love. It's great to be able to make bespoke pieces and it's great to forge relationships with your end user. And also the brand building side of it, working with our UK manufacturers. When we were looking for our standalone, the space in Kensington was offered to us by the estate and it was a semi-derelict garage, absolutely fantastic. I'm, it's just literally, if I stand outside, I can see the oratory which I adore. I love being in Brompton Road and having Chanel two minutes away. And the space itself is great. It's quite raw. It's, uh, it still needs a lot of work doing to it, but it's big and it's just got a wonderful feeling when you're in there. As we've grown and gone into manufacturing, what's become increasingly important, something of a passion now, is the manufacturing in the UK. We work with second and third generation workshops, which means that we have this never-ending source of support and knowledge. They are cool and calm in a crisis. They're so generous of their time. I've learned so much by working with these companies. And also, when you're small and you're finding your way, mass production is just just not something that you could do. So uh, the fact that we have always been able to make ones and twos bespoke in the UK is one of the big things which have set us apart from any of our competition. The Heels collaboration is something that personally I'm very excited about. We've been reworking vintage lighting with vintage Heels fabrics. Part of the, the joy of actually making those pieces and researching all of that has been looking into the vintage and antique fabric designs, which I didn't know very much about pre-starting this project. Because both the lighting itself and the fabrics are antique, it means that every piece is truly unique. 
it's kind of leading to a very eclectic collection of shapes and colours and patterns, which is fantastic. I'm finding it very inspirational. Squint has got quite a long way to go, I think. Part of our plans for the near future is to start opening stores internationally and expanding our uh, current product ranges. We'd like to go into bed linens, ceramics, glassware, uh, more lifestyle focused, embroideries, prints. How you create a luxury brand, how you put that out globally, those are the things that really interest me and as we grow that's the bit that becomes more exciting. Everyone always asks about the name. I used to have a lecturer at college who said that you had to squint before you started a drawing just to remove all the extraneous information. Uh, it was something that stuck, it just seems very appropriate for the brand and certainly as everything's gone forward and our work has gotten hotter and brighter, it seems to me the only name really I could have called my company.